Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. Today I am here with my Emerald Class W164 chassis Mercedes-Benz. And today we're going to be fitting a new air suspension front strut to this vehicle. So let's get into it. So why are we replacing this entire strut assembly? Well, as you can see from driving this vehicle, as we go over bumps, the entire shock absorber is completely stuffed in the right hand side. You can see the vibration that's absolutely coming through the vehicle as we hit these potholes. Now the first thing we're going to do is remove the 40 amp fuse to disable the airmatic suspension system. That, here's the fuse box at the front right of the engine bay, we just open that up. And this here is the fuse which we're going to remove. So as you can see I've got that fuse out, now if you have trouble getting that out, you can pull this relay out there, which gives you a little bit extra access. As you can see, today we're using the hoist just to make this job a little bit easier. So just lifting the car off the ground right now. All right, now we'll get the uh, wheel off the vehicle. So the next thing to do is to remove the three nuts on top of the strut under the bonnet using a 13 millimeter socket and the bracket with the wire on it. At this point, we just leave one nut loosely fitted to the top of the strut. Now we're gonna undo the airline with a 10 mil spanner. We've just cracked that and you can see it's just releasing the air pressure out of the air suspension. Okay. Alright, so as you can see we've got that airline disconnected. Now, the next thing going, we're going to do is to actually remove the electrical connection to the strut. And that is something that's slightly different from the front right to the front left. For the front left, you actually have to remove the whole inner skin. But for the front right, we should be able to get to the connection down here, unclip that and just feed that through without having to remove the inner skin from the inside of the mud guard. So if you're doing the front left, you're gonna to have to remove this whole skin, unfortunately. But for the front right, we don't need to do that. You can see, I've just removed this connector there um, and I've a little bit of a twist and then this cable will come off. Now we'll just loosen, we'll probably take one uh, of the bolts out on the inner skin and then we'll just feed this connection through to the air strut. So it's this one here. We'll just undo this one, just the one on the front right, just to allow access to pull that cable through. And as you can see, we've been able to pull that electrical cable through without removing this inner skin. What we're gonna be doing next is unclipping all of the electrical connections that come down onto the air strut. And what I recommend you do is to stop right now and take a couple of photographs so you know how to get this all back together at the end. These are the photographs which I took, which really did come in handy when putting these wires back together in the end. So as you can see, we've got all of the electrical connections unclipped free of the strut. We've also unclipped the uh, brake line so that we, we're going to be able to get this strut out now free of all of those electrical connections. To make life easier in undoing the nuts, we just now sprayed some RP7 on the upper ball joint nut, the sway bar nut and the lower drop nuts. The next thing to do is to undo the nut on the sway bar. Use a jack with a block of wood to lift the sway bar so that the linkage slides out easily. Next, remove the strut nut and bolt. At this point, support the strut with the block of wood and your jack, and then remove the upper ball joint nut with a 21 mm socket. You will probably then need to use a ball joint separator to crack the ball joint open. Having removed all the wires and nuts and bolts securing the strut, the next step is to remove the strut from the car completely. Don't forget to remove that 13 mm nut we left loose on top of the strut at the beginning. In order to remove the strut, you will need to compress the strut. And what I've found works well is using an inch diameter pipe through the bottom of the strut onto the subframe to do this compression. With the strut compressed, you can then maneuver it over the top of the front axle and then remove it completely from the car. All right, folks, so we've just got these two struts side by side. We've got the old one there to the right, which has come out of the car, and we've got the new one to the left. And what you can see straight away 
is look at the difference in the height. You can see that the old one is just so much lower. Now, what the reality is, is that strut has lost its oil for some reason, and it's just not going up to the full stroke. And what's gonna be happening is that strut is when it goes down, it's gonna be bottoming out, which is what's causing the shutter through the vehicle when you hit potholes. So, yeah, I'll give you another demonstration. We'll get the camera into the stand and we'll do some pushing on it and just have a bit of a play. So if we look at this strut here, the old one, we can see that really doesn't push down very far until it bottoms out at all. Whereas if we push down the new strut, you can see that's got a lot of travel. So you can see that the issue is that this old strut just doesn't have enough oil or pressure left inside the strut anymore. And it's just bottoming out. So we'll get that new one into the car and then we'll take her for a road test. All right, so we're gonna have to take this old bracket which holds all the cable management on the strut off. So that's just held on with a cable tie, so some side cutters, get that off. We should be able to get that whole bracket assembly off. There we go. So we'll get that old cable tie out, and then we will get the, the bracket onto the new strut. And we just secure the bracket with the new cable tie. All right, then that's good to uh, fit to the vehicle. It's now time to install this strut into the car, which really is just the reverse procedure that we went through to remove the strut from the car in the beginning. So to start the installation of the strut, you reposition the top bolts of the strut into the top of the wheel well and loosely fit a couple of nuts. The trick is now to compress that strut and get it up over that front drive shaft. As you can see, using that long inch pipe really does help here. A bit more. A bit more. That's it. Next, lift the lower assembly so that you can easily insert the lower strut bolt and nut. Then the nut can be tightened onto the strut bolt using a 24 millimeter socket and 15 16 spanner. Next, use a jack and a block of wood to easily lift the whole assembly such that the upper control arm comes up onto the ball joint. Next, you need to tighten the nut onto the upper ball joint. If you use a socket like this, you will find that the entire ball joint just spins and the nut doesn't actually tighten. So to tighten the nut on the upper ball joint, what you need to do is use a 21 mm spanner on the nut and a T30 socket bit on the ball joint stud. Remember, you will need to ratchet the T30 socket anti-clockwise to tighten the nut onto the ball joint. Next, it's time to reinstall the sway bar and once again we use the block of wood and jack to lift the sway bar into position. And then it's a matter of tightening the nut onto the sway bar linkage. Once again, you will probably find that you need to use a 21mm spanner on the nut and a T30 socket bit on the start of the sway bar linkage, similar to the ball joint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push this lead through behind the panel here and we'll reconnect that on the inside. The active dampening electrical cable through we're going to reconnect it to the bracket. Remember that just needed a slight twist. And that clicks back into place like that. And then the connector just slides on. All right, so just looking in here, we've got everything reassembled. We've got the bolt and the nut on the other end of the lower end of the strut, fully torqued up. We've got the top nut here fully torqued up. We've got the linkage nut to the uh, torsion bar fully torqued up. We've got all the electrical connectors and brake line connector. All of those are back in position as per the photo. We've got the connector back done up to the inside and the nut back on to the inner fender guard. So now it's just to go in under the bonnet and finish up there. So up the top, it's just a matter of putting the three 13 mil nuts onto the top of the strut. Make sure that bracket there goes back into position torque those down as we've done and then reattach the airline now the kit actually came with a new fitting so you just take that little brass collar off pull the old fitting off and put the new one on and then just tighten that up modestly tight there's a rubber o-ring so no need to over tighten that so the final thing to do then is to pop that airmatic suspension fuse back in that 40 amp fuse that we took out in the beginning put the cover on the fuse box put the wheel back on the vehicle and test all right so with that wheel back on the car now 
what we need to do is to lower the vehicle down. And what we need to do is actually lower the vehicle down to a point where it's going to trigger the airmatic suspension to uh, blow up that air spring now. So we'll just keep lowering the vehicle down. Not all the way so it compresses. But we'll go a bit further than that. A little bit further. And that's probably about enough like that. And then what we do is we start the vehicle up and the air medic compressor will kick in. If it doesn't kick in, the simplest thing to do is to simply activate the raising of the suspension, the four wheel drive mode or cycle it through the sports comfort mode and that'll trigger the compressor. So let's do that now. All right, so let's start the vehicle. And then what we'll do is we'll come around to the uh, center console. We'll just press the button to rise the airmatic suspension. And as you can see, the vehicle now says it's rising and we can hear the airmatic compressor has kicked in. So, with that air spring now full of air, we can just lower the car completely off of the hoist or jack stands, like we're doing right now. And we should be good to go for a road test. It's all looking pretty good. Just to check in here, you can see there's no air leaks. Fantastic. All right, so just taking the ML for a test drive, now that we've fitted that new front strut and hitting a few potholes straight away, you can see that that clunking noise is completely gone from the suspension. So it's very obvious to me that that was the issue, that that front strut the shock absorber component of that front start had actually failed. Hit a couple of potholes there. You can see it's absolutely perfect now. Another one there. There's no clunking noise at all. So that's just fantastic. So there you go, folks. That's how to replace the complete front air strut on a Mercedes W164 ML class vehicle. As I showed you, you can clearly see that the old strut, the shock absorber component of the assembly had completely failed in the original unit. Now, if you've seen other videos, you would see that I've actually replaced the air spring component, just that component of that in the past. Now, that was actually an aftermarket part, as was this complete assembly here today. Now, Mercedes don't actually sell just the air spring, and perhaps that's because by the time the spring fails, the shock absorber part's probably going to fail as well. So, perhaps in hindsight, I should have replaced the complete assembly but up to you what you do folks you've seen what's happened here for myself it's only about 20,000 kilometers since i did that air spring component on this vehicle so if you like this video don't forget to like this video and in the future if you want to see other content I've got plenty of content on this mercedes on the audi and now the Mazda as well so please subscribe to the channel until next time have a good evening